Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. You know, we've been talking about Docker and self-hosting and that sort of thing uh, for the better part of 18 or 19 months now. And one of the recurring things that people have asked me to talk about over that time is hosting an email server. Now, I have, I have uh, for a long time said, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, they're, they're, it's very complicated. There's lots of little bits and pieces and that sort of thing. And uh, I, I still hold all of those uh, sentiments to be true. Uh, the, the Hosting an email, uh, server can be complicated for a lot of reasons. Um, but here recently, I started looking at a, uh, a new self-hosted uh, dashboard system that I wanted to take a look at. And one of the things uh, that's part of that is uh, email. Now that's uh, having a, an internal email server for the purposes of this platform, but also uh, allowing you to host your own email server uh, for your domain name and things like that. So here we are on my desktop and this is uh, you know host or why you know host. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, it's it's a fairly popular platform that I've seen uh, come up over and over and over again when I've been talking or looking up how to uh, host different things. Uh, this is one of those tools that just kept coming up and it's it's actually got a lot of potential, I think, if we go into applications uh, and we'll give this a second to load. Here are some of the applications I've tried installing. I've had good luck with some of them, some bad luck with some others, but I'm still learning the platform and that sort of thing. Now, what I, the, the, the reason I'm, I'm even bringing these two things together is because there is a tool in here uh, that will kind of give us a little bit of information as far as setting up certain things, including an email server. If we come back over to here and we go over to diagnosis, Right here, so now right now it's gonna go through all of these uh, things that it needs to make sure that everything is up and running correctly. And uh, we're gonna find a couple of issues like related to DNS here, uh, a couple of issues with ports being exposed. Uh, that, that looks good as far as it's concerned there. Uh, but when this comes up, we'll give it another second or two here. Okay, so here are the results. And the first one, uh, I'm not gonna open this up because it's got my IP address in it. And I'm trying to expose my IP address as little as possible, uh, both for security reasons and even uh, I'm gonna edit it in post, but it's a lot to remember to go back and edit and fix that sort of thing. Uh, this is just having a fit because uh, I've put uh, Cloudflare's DNS proxy in place. So it's having a fit with that. I could fix that later, but I'm not going to. The next thing here is some DNS records uh, that it needs to have put in place uh, with regards to an MX record, an A record, expected values, that sort of thing. This is this is wrong and I can fix that in Cloudflare as well. Um, it's got, these two are <clears throat> uh, missing or incorrect, uh, even though I've gone through this whole process here and uh, I have copied and pasted everything that they've given me into the records for Cloudflare. There are still some things that are, that are wrong. So DNS is a huge, part of uh, the email setup process. And if one little thing goes wrong in that process, or, or if something is configured incorrectly during that process, um, it, will, it will render your email undeliverable or unreceivable. Uh, so that's just one aspect to take into consideration is DNS really can be complicated to set this kind of thing up, especially I can't, I can't stress it to this, especially if you've got a dynamic, a dynamic IP address. Um, if you've got a dynamic IP address, it complicates things even more uh, setting up this DNS stuff. But wait, there's more. So if we come down, <clears throat> next thing here says your domain's not gonna register anytime soon. It shouldn't, it's registered for a year. Um, <clears throat> we can get down here into ports. Ports are another thing that your server will need to have uh, for mail and that sort of thing. Now, not all, not all of this is mail related, but some of them are, and, and specifically port 25. Now, port 25 is, is a typical port for use, used for SMTP. Um, the thing is a lot of ISPs block that port. Now, the reason I, I bring that up also is that uh, I've done my, my port forwarding here. Uh, this is the inside of my uh, Unify network right here. And right here is port 25. It's going to the right IP address. But my, my ISP, in this case, Comcast, Xfinity, whatever, um, they have blocked my ability to use port 25. So that's another issue that you're gonna run into is that a lot of ISPs will block ports that you need. Uh, honestly, I'm surprised that port 22 isn't blocked. Uh, it probably should be, but it's not. And, um, and and again, they blocked port 25. So so that, that kind of negates the whole thing at that point. Um, so if we can come down, port 22,000 is available. Uh, I don't even know if I set that one up. I thought I did, maybe not. Uh, but port 25 is a huge one as far as mail is concerned. 
When we get down here a little further, I'm gonna have to block my IP address there. Hopefully I remember to do it all. Um, but basically, uh, all of this has to do with the fact that um, the the DNS, I don't have all of the right DNS records in there because there's a lot of stuff to put in there. And I'm sure if I were to spend more time with it, uh, I could go through that process. The problem is that uh, every time you set up a, a mail, an email server, your DNS records are going to be very similar, but you're gonna have some things that are gonna change. And you have to know which of those things are going to change. Um, but again, if your ISP uh, changes your IP address regularly, that complicates things. And if your ISP blocks any of the necessary ports, that complicates things and make it, makes it much more difficult, if not impossible, to host your own email server. Now, if we scroll down a little further, I guess, I guess that's pretty much everything there. However, oh, right here. Well, sort of. Uh, we, we're, one of the other things I wanted to talk about here uh, is that, um, oh, right here, where my IP address says, your IP address or domain has been black blacklisted by Spam House Zen. Now, there are lots of blacklist servers, providers, whatever out there, like credit scores, you know, in the, at least in the United States, we've got Experian and Equifax and TransUnion and maybe some more at this point. I don't, I don't know anymore. But uh, basically, there are lots and lots of um, these uh, these these are basically all lists that the people that, that services use to verify whether or not an IP address has been blacklisted. So uh, an IP address could be blacklisted for any number of reasons. Typically, it's because uh, that IP address has been used for nefarious things or has been known to send a lot of spam. Uh, they they basically these different services keep track of IP addresses, where spam is going, where spam is coming from, that sort of thing. And uh, if 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 your IP address gets lumped in with that, well then you get blacklisted. Listed. And yes, you can go through a process to get your IP address unblacklisted, but um, it can be a tedious nightmare. Uh, I've had to do it in the past, and uh, there are just things out of your control. Like you can submit tickets and requests and things like that to have your IP address unblacklisted, but um, there's no guarantee that you're gonna be removed from any of these blacklists. So that's yet another reason that even if you've done nothing wrong, which I haven't, uh, it's just I've been put on two, my IP address has been put on two blacklists and I could probably go through that process and get them removed. But in the meantime, I can't do anything with my email server and there's like a 95% chance that nobody will get my email or if they do, it'll go directly to their spam folder. Um, so there's so there's another level of, of things to complicate hosting your own email server. So you've got complicated DNS records, you've got ISPs blocking ports, and you've got the potential of your IP address being blacklisted due to no fault of your own. So this is why I wanted to bring these things up. There are just things that are complicated to set up and things that are out of your control from your ISP, whether it's a whether it's a, a, a dynamic IP address or ports being blocked or whatever. And and look, I know I could probably go through this process of getting these unblacklisted, but even if that happens, there's no guarantee that I won't get re-blacklisted for, for something that I've got no control over. So you almost have to have, uh, you've got to have alerts set up, you've got to have time to dedicate to getting yourself removed from blacklists. There's just a lot of things that are complicated about hosting an email server. And if any of those things go wrong, you won't get your email or somebody else won't get their email. Or if you send somebody an email outside of your network or outside of your, your domain name, the email that they may or may not get may or may not go to spam. There's just, there's so much to take into consideration when it comes to hosting an email. In fact, uh, we were having this discussion in my discord, which uh, if you want to go check that out, I'll have linked in the description down below. Um, but but there's, a, there's a, there's a person in our discord who is uh, an email server. That's his, that's his job as he maintains an email server. And he even said that spending like five bucks uh, having Gmail host your, your email through Google apps or Google sites or whatever it's called these days will be the best five bucks you ever spent. And that's what I've been doing with my email address. It's all hosted through, through Google. And it just, it takes all of the complication out of having email. And yes, I know Google's the bad guy and Google, Google is, is, is scanning your emails and targeting you with ads and that sort of thing. But uh, if you've been cautious uh, and you've got the right things set in place, 
um, it, it's much harder for them to target you via ads. So it, it's one of those cases where I think hosting email, or rather self-hosting email, uh, it just isn't worth the time and effort and headache and confusion and frustration and all of the synonyms that go along with that. It's just, in my opinion, it's not worth it. So that's why you'll probably never, ever, ever see me produce a video showing how to set up an email server, the amount of time that's got to go into it, the constant maintenance and monitoring of that server, of your IP address, of your domain name. Uh, it, it's, it's just, it's too much for the average person to deal with. And, and I really do feel like it's a better option to have your email hosted by somebody or an organization or, or something that, that that's what they do. They host email. And I think that that's, uh, that's one of those times where self-hosting just isn't the answer. And, and I'm catching myself rambling here. So, uh, self-hosting email, bad, paying someone to host email, good, uh, complicated setup, constant maintenance, not worth it. So uh, that's just kind of my take on email and self-hosting it. So hopefully, uh, if you've got questions, I'd, I'd love to answer those questions. Uh, maybe we can start a dialogue in the in the comment section down below about maybe, maybe you've got different ideas or a different thought on it. I'd love to hear it. Um, but with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.